People cannot control their nostalgia for this album. And honestly, all right, what's up, Icy Flavored Oreos? I can't believe those are real. Welcome to another episode of Guarcenio's High School CD Booklet Review. The YouTube show where I go through all the albums I bought in high school and you laugh because a lot of them are emo and I'm a little corpse paint man. And speaking of emo, not real emo, just what mainstream society thinks is emo, today we're talking about Taking Back Sunday. And today I'm in streets because we've been shooting a lot of content and all of my suits are at the cleaners. So yeah, today's the big one. It's Tell All Your Friends. It's the master of puppets of music that's been played inside of a journeys. The undisputed heavyweight champion of bands that wrote lyrics about lying on the bathroom floor or whatever. I feel confident putting that label on this album because for a couple of years, I played rhythm guitar in a punk karaoke band. It was mostly AFI and Hot Water Music and Op Ivy and whatever, but we played a My Chemical Romance. We played a Fall Out Boy. We played a Coheed and Cambria, but man, Every single time we played Cute Without the E, all the 35 year olds in the audience forgot how old they were and rushed the stage like it was that time Davey Havoc sang Straight Edge Revenge with Ceremony. We played shows once a month and it happened literally every time. People cannot control their nostalgia for this album. And honestly, neither can I. I've mentioned probably too many times at this point that I was not a pop punk and emo fan when I was in high school. But this album takes me back to being a kid, sneaking out of my parents' house to go meet up with my friends, to skateboard over to girls' houses that I was too scared to talk to. For most kids my age, this album was on constant rotation every summer from late middle school all the way through high school. And dudes, I gotta be honest, I thought I was gonna hate listening to this today. Like sure, all the lyrics are about being terrible to your ex-girlfriend and even worse to your current girlfriend and the vocal stylings are not my favorite, but there's something about the vibe and the authenticity of this album that I still connect with. And for me, I think that authenticity is an under-discussed piece of what makes certain albums great, at least my favorite albums. Ride the Lightning is probably my favorite Metallica album. I'm not gonna talk about it too much because it's probably gonna get its own episode one day, but it's my favorite because it feels the most authentically Metallica. The magic of Metallica is the combination of their technical ability, their classical music composition, and their stinky skater children energy. And I think Ride the Lightning has the most even amount of all of those things. They're nailing that ambitious composition, the riffs are unbelievable, but also James is going through puberty and the guitars are out of tune. If a bunch of 40 year olds made Ride the Lightning, it might not be that cool, it might be lame. But the album feels authentically cool because it was made by actual cool stinky little punk kids. And it's honestly impressive that these literal children are arranging their messy little riffs like it's Mozart. And that same authenticity logic is why I think an album like Tell All Your Friends still works. It's an immature I hate girls album written by immature boys. It's also got the perfect production for this type of shit. And sonically, it's right in that genre sweet spot of combining Sunny Day Real Estate and Texas is the Reason with that mainstream pop punk sound that's gonna take over for the rest of the odds. However, let's talk about this album art. This looks like a hidden level in Mario Kart Double Dash where Donkey Kong pulls over to have a fight with his wife. This looks like a photo that your grandfather would show you reminiscing about how he and his war buddies used to piss at every exit on the New Jersey Turnpike. You see this one, Garcenio? That one's at the beginning of The Sopranos, so technically your grandfather's piss is on HBO. This looks like a state-sanctioned pamphlet begging Burger King to open a shitty restaurant on their boring highway. This looks like the part of the Zapruder film where the cameraman looks down and realizes he got hot dog mustard on his pants. This looks like Linda Belcher from Bob's Burgers getting a DUI. So to sum up, I think this album is good, but it's very much a lightning in a bottle situation. The success of it comes from the immaturity feeling authentic. And it's the reason I don't think I can get into any other Taking Back Sunday album. They're all gonna be too polished and they're honestly too old to be writing bullshit like this. It's time to grow the fuck up, fellas. Take a cue from Tom Waits and write a song about getting divorced on an oil rig or some shit. But yeah, that's it for this week's episode. Feel free to talk shit about me and the album in the comments below. Next week, we're doing Slipknot's Iowa! It's two minutes to late night!